Hey guys, we're going to be continuing on with all of the mods that I use myself. So if you didn't see last video that I posted yesterday, that goes through my top 10 mods and also how to use them. And so today's video is basically every single other mod that I use with a click with a quick explanation on how I use them. So let's get through all of the really, really basic ones first. So the first one is the 81 tiles. So if you click on here, uh, originally you only have nine tiles that you can unlock but I actually have the mod that allows me to unlock up to 81 now you can go beyond that and download a mod that unlocks the whole map but for me I just have the 81 tile uh, I find that's the most effective for me and my computer the next one is the automatic bulldozer which is pretty self-explanatory another one is the uh, it removes the abandonment so no one is going to abandon their house no one's going to move out no fires and no seagulls so they're pretty pretty basic and very self-explanatory another really great one is the demand master right here so if you have an issue in your city where no one is building so you can actually change the demand so you can see down here it actually moves up and down and if you want to keep it at 100 percent demand you can fix it into place and if you want no demand for commercial for whatever reason you can lock it in or you can unlock it and you can change it or you can just pull it up but if you leave it like this without actually fixing it fixing the value it will slowly change over time so I use this a lot and a lot of people say well don't use it it's going to mess up your game it doesn't really mess it up it's it's really not that bad now in terms of appearance you might want to remove the clouds or fog so I actually use the cloud and fog toggler and to actually enable that you need to go up into here into your options and find it down in your list in here so you can see you have all of these different options, disable clouds, disable industrial smog, which is one that's really, really handy, disable distant fog and disable ed edge fog. So to just show you, uh, I'll put these on. Okay, take note of how the edge looks now. And then if you remove these two, you can see that it changes. It removes that kind of purpley image. So it's a really good one to have, especially for removing the industrial smog, which I find really unrealistic unreal and quite ugly. Another great mod for appearance in the game is the unlimited eye candy mod. So if you go down here, I use this every single day in my video. So before I actually play the game, um, let me just show you. So originally when you open the game, it'll look like this. Now I don't want to have it like that. So I have my own setting. So what you can do is you can actually move it around and adjust the latitude, the longitude, how bright it is, different brightnesses. Um, if you have day and night enabled, you can change the day. You can speed up the day cycle or make it go really slow. Um, you can add weather, you can increase the rain intensity. So you have all of these different options. And so I have made my own, so every day I press load, and there we go. And then sometimes I just adjust it to put in a little bit of cloud and brighten it up, just like that. So this is a really, really handy one to have. And so you'll have to download this and figure it out for yourself to see what works best for you. Uh, this is my settings, so this is how I like it. So it's really up to you how you want it. And then another one for appearances, if you have a really strong computer, maybe you want to enable even more better graphic settings than what it allows for in the game. So you can actually download the dynamic resolution and to open that up, you press F10, which brings this up here. And so you can adjust this to however you want. Now I have this set at about around about 208, which is about 3940 frame rates in general. Uh, you can leave that open and it'll show how the frame rates drop and increase and things like that. So this is really, really great to have. So if your computer is really laggy, you can put it right down if you want and set it to whatever is really easiest for you. Obviously, I'm not going to leave it like that because I don't like how it looks. So I'm going to put it back up to about 208 is what I found is most efficient for mine so this is a really great one I always use this now this car down here this is advanced vehicle option so I made a whole other video about this but just to show you guys you can actually go through here and change the different settings of the vehicle so for example you might want to make this car go even faster or maybe you want to adjust the, a bus so you can find the buses in here and you can increase the capacity you can make them go really fast change the colors um, so this is a really handy one to have, but I'll link the video above so go watch that and you can see how to actually adjust all of this in much more depth It's a really really handy one to have if you want to increase the speeds and just make things I don't know maybe you want to do a really speedy train or a really speedy highways or things like that 
Building themes over here is really handy, so it's in the policy tab. Now, I would really recommend doing this because I use this all the time. So what that basically means is if you have a district, so you can choose your district like this, and then you can choose what theme you want. So for this area, I have European Suburbia, um, and you can also make your own. So if you go into here, you can say, let's make a new theme, and I'm just going to call it Example, and press Create. Now to add them in, all you have to do is go through all of the, the different types of buildings and just simply select what you want to have in it. So you can go into here, select these ones, or you can you can change it all around, ch choose the level. So maybe you want to have an area, so maybe you want to have a district that it has very cheap housing, or maybe you want to have one that has really expensive houses. So that's really up to you, and it's a really great one to have. So I have all of my different examples. So international for me is the vanilla ones. Uh, this one is buildings that are lower than three levels. This one is all Russian style buildings, and then this one is the European in-game type as well. The next one I use quite often to really have an in-depth look at stuff it's called the first person camera so it, it's actually this one here so before you actually go into it you can change all of the settings um, but I usually just leave that how it is so to actually enable it there's two different things that you can do so the first one is you can go to a vehicle or a person and you can click and then you click on this button right here which actually takes you into their view now I have it set so the camera is above the vehicle and then you can just press play and off they go but another thing that you can do is actually you can just press tab and that creates a whole different type of view so originally you have this view down here which you actually have to move around with the scrolling thing on your mouse but if you press tab you can see it's actually much more free-flowing so I'm just moving around with my actual mouse so I'm moving up and down so if you want to go forward you can press W S to go backwards A to go left and then D to go right now if you want to go even faster you can hold down W or whichever direction and hold down caps lock and it goes even faster like that now when you use this this actually allows you to go anywhere on the map whether or not you have bought that area or not so if, for example if I zoom out here so this is the area that I have bought already that enables me to build in this area but for example these areas over here I haven't bought yet so I actually can't build on them but I can go around and explore them which is really really cool so you might want to go and just have a look around your map and just see what really is out there so you can go around and you can go really really close into things like this or you can you can even go under tunnels which is pretty cool um, and you can really go right into your city and have a real look now the difference between this and the in-game camera mode is if you go near a building the original camera mode is going to be interfered with the building it's going to make it bounce everywhere but you can see with this one it really goes anywhere so you can go inside the trees you can go inside buildings not that there's anything to look at but you can really go anywhere and it's a really really great tool to have and i would really really recommend it and to exit it you just press tab now one other quick thing that i should mention that i think is pretty cool is you can actually see the speed limits of a vehicle so if you go into here you can see it shows the speed limit and then if they go faster it's going to increase or decrease and things like that and it also shows the street that they are on so to actually enable that you go up into here and you go down here and just simply press display speed um, and that's pretty much it and I really really love to see the actual speed that they do um, because it's it's more of a curiosity thing for me and it's just really cool to have. Improved public transport is another really great one to have if you want to know more details about your transport and if you want to have more control so if I press pause so you can click on any type of transport and it brings up more information like this so you can see that how many passengers were on last time versus how many are on now how much money they're making and things like that and you can also go into line details and you have all of these options here so you can choose exactly what types of vehicles you want or you can you can make it so there's a variety of different vehicles or one different type of vehicle uh, it's a really really handy one to have now I will link a video above where I actually went through all of this much more in depth and it's a really really cool one to have if you just want to have more in depth in your game and more control over the vehicle types another really really great mod to have is network extensions 2 this is the mod that allows you to have so many different types of roads that aren't in the game so if you go into here i don't even remember what is vanilla what is the vanilla roads and what is actually from this new 
uh, network extension but if you go in here you have all of these other types of roads so for example I think this is one of them um, all of these guys here are really handy uh, you have just so many more different options which is really really cool to have and it's always great to have a lot more options than just in-game ones um, especially for me because I like to get a lot more technical so I'd really highly recommend using this it's just really great to have speaking of road types there's one called network skins which is really really great to have so when you click on a road you have this option over here so basically you can choose the different type of uh, street lamp so for example this is the original type lamp but you can actually change it to literally any type of lamp that you want and I don't know where it went but it really does change it to any single one that you want and if you have a road that has trees on it you can actually customize the type of tree that you want so this is the original vanilla game trees but you can actually change it to anything so for example I'm going to change both sides to flower tree and you can see right there or you can change one side to a different tree so you can see one side is that one and the other one is that one now this is a really really great one to have because you don't always want to just have the vanilla trees on the road which I think is quite boring you might want to make it just a little bit more funky and interesting right so it's a really really cool thing to have now you can also change the pillars underneath so for example if we raise it up I'll just show you raise 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 so you can choose all of the different type of pillars so you see that there's whatever this one is cable stay or you can choose really any type you can see right there these they look really out of shape but you can really choose t any type that you want and just a quick little thing that I should mention that if you actually want to demolish the, the pillar you can use the move it mod select the pillar now don't select the mode this is the mode this is the pillar you can actually delete it like that so it's just in case you want to move it into place that's a really really handy thing to have in terms of the key there's a really great mod called the key anarchy so what that does it basically allows you to draw these type of keys anywhere on the map so origi originally in the game you can only draw a key on the side of a shoreline but now with the key anarchy you can actually draw them anywhere you want so it doesn't just have to be on a cliff it can be on flat ground it can really be anywhere and it's really really great to have I use this a lot because maybe I want to make a nice just a nice cliff edge so just something that looks a lot more neater it's a really really great thing to have I really recommend using it and there's so many different type of keys that you can download a lot of them are in my mods and asset list if you go to the bottom there's a collection full of them uh, they're just really really great to have and it makes it look so much more neater and so much more realistic surface painter is another really really great one so it's this guy down here surface tool so what that allows you to do is basically paint the ground so there's different types so we have cement or pavement which is the one that I use most often you have the gravel which I don't really use you have the ruined but it's set, it's showing grass but it doesn't really look like grass so you can see right there or you can have like this type of farmland so for example you can change the different size of the brush that you want and so you can, all you have to do is select it and then just use the left click and fill it in right just like that and it blends in with the whole area so for example these ones here look like this but I don't really like them you have this guy here uh, or this one and then this one just basically deletes the whole area so if you have some really ugly little gaps, so for example like in here, maybe you just want to fill them in, you don't want to see grass, so you can just go like that, and it's done. You can fill it in there, done. Or even if you want to make this whole area, you can fill it in, but I don't want to because it looks a little bit ugly. And then similar to this one, you have the ground resource. So if you want to actually place your own resources, so you have ore, oil, and farmlands, and then if you want to place trees, you just place trees using this one. So you can place it down, you can see it changes the ground color. Um, you can put oil there or you can put farmland um, so you can actually remove that if it's on the map somewhere else and you don't really like it so you can remove that uh, and it's just really really great to have I see a lot of people if we go down to the shoreline a lot of people will use the oil one and do it along the shoreline to make that bit of a I don't know maybe it's a type of shoreline somewhere it's a bit of a visual thing so some people like to do that um, so you can just add in resources ba basically wherever you want uh, if you're really into that stuff I don't really use it that much but it's just great to have just for like that rainy day when you do decide that you might want to use it so just before we finish there's another really really great one it's called the no radioactive desert and you have all of these different options so for example the first one is when you place a tree near a shoreline it actually looks dead so you can completely remove that so the trees will stay the same you can remove the dead looking trees from the industrial areas 
um, and you have all of these other great options so no polluted area ground color as well so if you have an industrial area sometimes the color of the ground will become quite I think purpley I think in the game I haven't seen it for so long but you can actually remove that using this mod and you have all of these other different options which is, which is really really cool to have um, because I find um, some of these little things to be quite annoying and quite ugly. Okay guys, and the very 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 last one is called the prop line. This is a really great tool what I use mostly for putting fences. So for example, if I go into the find it mod and type in hedge, so I click on it and then it brings up this little panel down here. So this panel you've seen before, but we're going to go to single and then you can actually draw a line with the hedge. So you can go like that. Now, you can change all of the settings in here, the spacing, different things like that, but you can actually choose that to actually make it go into a fence mode, which allows it to go really close together, and you can just drag it around like this. Now, the funny thing is, for example, you can do this with literally anything. So if I, for example, find a table, you can draw a line of tables, just like that. Or if you take that off, it's going to have a larger spacing, which you can change in there. You can even do circles if you want, or you can just place them down on their own or do slight curves like that. So this is the prop line tool. It's really, really cool. You don't have to enable anything. You just select what you want down here. You can adjust different things in there if you want, but I usually don't really bother with that. Um, I usually do just use it for the hedges. It's a really cool thing to have and I would highly recommend that. So that was the last one. Um, I think that is basically everything. I hope I haven't forgot anything, but those are definitely the major ones. The only ones that I haven't included is all of the dependencies. Now when I say dependencies, those are the mods that you have to download when you download another mod. So for example, I'll just make up a hypothetical one. If you download building themes, maybe you'll have to download another mod that goes with it to actually help enable it. So when you download a mod, Please make sure that there isn't an, a dependency that you need because some of you guys, some of you guys from the last episode said, "Hey Sam, we have I've been using this mod. I downloaded this mod, but I actually don't see it. What can I do?" And some of the, some of the times, maybe you just forgot to download the dependencies, or maybe you forgot to enable it in your content manager before you enter the game, or if you go into your settings, into the options, maybe you need to enable it up in there. So that is all for you guys. I really hope you guys got something from this. There were so many different mods and I know it is kind of overwhelming and it took me a long time to really get into all of this. I've definitely downloaded a lot more mods recently because a lot of you guys are helping me and I've also removed some that are not very necessary. So if there's una so if there's any other really great mods that you know about that I didn't mention or if there's something I forgot, please let me know because a lot of you guys probably will see that and get something from it. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all very soon with another video. Bye guys.